Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this snowflake generator using geometry nodes in Blender. It's a fairly easy tutorial. When you've completed this, you won't just have snowflakes for Christmas, you'll have snowflakes for life. So without further ado, let's get to it. So I'm going to open up Blender. I've gone to my geometry nodes tab over here. I'm going to select the default cube. I'll just drag my geometry nodes window up here. I'll then click new to add a new geometry nodes window. It's going to take this group input. I'm going to hit G. I'm going to drag this across over to here. I'll then drag my cursor to the top left up here where it says edit. I'm going to choose preferences and we'll go to add-ons and type in node for node wrangler and then enable the node wrangler here. Hit shift A, go to mesh and we choose primitives and we go to grid. I'll then hold down control, right mouse button and drag and that will disconnect the group input from the group output. I'll then plug the mesh from the grid node into the geometry output. I'll be hitting on pad 7 in my 3D viewport just to see what we've got here. So it's added a plane, but this plane is a bit different from a normal plane. So if I go into wireframe view and I increase the vertices on the Y, you can see it's adding loop cuts on the Y and the same as with the X. So exactly what it says on the tin is a grid node. I'll just go back into solid view. I'll then hit shift A, go to instances, instance on points, and I'll pop that in between the grid node and the group output node. I'm gonna plug the grid into the instances socket and for the point socket, I'm gonna hit shift A, go to curve, we'll choose primitives and we'll choose curve circle. I'm gonna set the resolution to six for now. I'll then plug the curve into the points. And what that's done, it's added a grid for every point on the curve. So if I hit control shift and left click on the curve, you can see that's the curve there and we can increase the resolution. Now if I delete that viewer node and increase the resolution on here, you can see that it's created a grid on each point of that curve. Grab this across over to here, I'll grab this over to here, give us a bit more breathing space. I'll then hit shift A, go to geometry, we choose operations and we choose transform geometry. I'll then pop that in between the grid node and the instance on points node. And for the X rotation, I'm gonna type in two degrees. The Y rotation, I'm gonna type in negative two degrees. And on the Z axis, I'm gonna type in 4.5 degrees. And that will just offset these planes ever so slightly. I'll then hit shift A and we'll go to points and distribute points on faces. I'm gonna pop that in between the transform geometry and the instance on points. And what this will do, it will distribute points randomly on each of the faces of the grid mesh, which is also distributed by the curve circle. I'm gonna change it from random to poison disc, and I'm gonna change the minimum distance to 0.5. I'll then shift A, go to instances, instance on points, and I'll pop that in between here, and we want to instance this grid on each of the points. So I'm gonna pop this mesh from the grid into the instance socket on the instance on points. I'll then hold down shift, right click and drag to add a control point here. I'll then hit G, just drag this up, hold down shift, right click and drag, G, just so we can see where that's going. Now I want to randomize the rotation on this Z axis. So I'm gonna hit shift A, I'm gonna to go to utilities and choose random value. I'm gonna change it from float to vector. I'll plug the vector into the rotation on the instance on points. I don't want to rotate on X and Y, so I'm gonna set that to zero. I only want to rotate on the Z axis. So at the moment it's rotating between zero and one. So I'm gonna set this value to 1000. I'll then hit shift A, utilities, vector, combine X, Y, Z. I'll pop that there. I'll then pop this vector into the bottom socket of this random value node. Set the Z value to 1000. And the reason I'm adding the combine X, Y, Z is because I want to expose this Z value here which will appear in our modifier over here. I want to randomize the value of the scale of these planes. And to do that, I'm gonna take this random value. I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate. I'm gonna pop it down here. The minimum values for X and Y, I'm gonna type in 0.1. I'm gonna keep the Z value at zero. And for the max for X, I'm gonna type in 0.5. For Y, I'm gonna type in five. And for Z, I'm gonna type in one. Now I'll plug the value from this random value node into the scale of this instance on points. Excellent. Let me just increase this window slightly. I'll just hit numpad 7 to go into top view so we can see what we're doing. Now I want to be able to align all of these on a tangent so they're all pointing outwards. So it's going to be a math function of arctan2. If you're not sure what arctan2 is, I'm sure you can watch a YouTube video which explains it. It's quite simple. So I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go to utilities. We go to vector and we choose combine XYZ. I just pop that down here. I'm gonna plug that into the rotation. I just drag this down here. Shift A, utilities, vector, separate X, Y, Z. Shift A, utilities, math, and we choose math. 
and we're going to change it from add to arctan2 i'll then hit shift a we'll go to geometry read and we'll choose position i'm going to plug the position into the separate xyz i'm going to plug the x into the bottom socket of the math node and the y into the top socket of the math node i'll then plug the value from the arctan2 into the z component of the combined xyz and as you can see they're all kind of pointing out and now we want to symmetrize this so to do that it's going to select these nodes here i'm going to hit g i'm just going to drag these across over to here i'll then hit shift a go to geometry and we choose join geometry shift a geometry operations transform geometry i'll just drag this down to here i'll then plug the instances into the geometry of the transform geometry and this geometry into the bottom socket of the join geometry and under y i'm going to type in negative one and hit enter and now we've kind of symmetrized that entire shape excellent now i want to be able to scale this uniformly so over here after instance on points i'll hit shift a geometry operations and we we'll choose transform geometry i'll pop that in between the instance on points and the group out Output. I'm going to set the X, Y, and Z scale to 0.5 just to scale it down. Now we can start exposing some of the parameters into the geometry nodes modifier over here. But before we do that, it's a good practice to save your file just in case it crashes. So I'm going to go file, save as, and I'm going to save mine as like and subscribe. Thanks, folks, you absolute legends. The first parameter we're going to expose will be this resolution here. So I'm going to plug that into the bottom socket of this group input node. I'm going to hit N to open up my end panel and up here where it says group, I'm going to choose that resolution socket there and I'm going to type in point count. I'm going to set a default value of six, a minimum value of four and maximum value of 16. And the reason I set a maximum value to 16 is because in the geometry nodes modifier here, I don't want to be able to drag it too far to infinity because it'll make Blender crash. Okay, let's just zoom out of it. The next parameters we'll expose will be the seed values. I'm going to take this seed value from this distribute points on faces. I'm going to plug that into the bottom socket. I'll then take this seed value from the random value node, which is plugged into the rotation. And I'm going to plug that into the same seed socket. And I'll also take the seed value from this random value node, which is plugged into the scale. And I'm going to plug that into the same seed socket. So now when we change the seed, it's going to randomize the rotation. It's going to randomize the scale and it's going to randomize the distribution of the points. And over here on your end panel where it says seed, I'm going to type in seed pattern. The next value I want to expose will be the rotation. This one here. So I'll just drag this Z rotation and plug it into the bottom socket over here. And maybe we'll rename this to point rotation and to get rid of this option here we just navigate down to the bottom where it says single value i'll click that and now we can change the rotation on the fly we can give this a material so i'll just drag this down i'll then take my cursor in the 3d viewport to the top left of the screen until i see a crosshair i'll hold down my left mouse button and drag and that'll open up a new window i'll then change it from 3d viewport to shader editor i hit n to close that end panel and i'm going to scroll over to my material over here and i'm going to rename this to snowflake i'll just delete the principal bsdf i hit shift a go to shader and i'm going to choose emission shader and plug it into the surface i then go to my 3d viewport i'm going to drag my mouse to the top left until i see the crosshair left click drag and it will collapse that window and over here i'm going to hit shift a go to material and set material i'm going to pop that in between the transform geometry and the group output and i'm going to choose that material snowflake now say i chose a random seed pattern that i like something like that and if i click this button here and i click apply it's not going to be able to apply it into mesh and that's because we haven't realized the instances so back in your geometry nodes window let me just increase this in between the instance on points and the transform geometry i'm going to hit shift a go to instances and we choose realize instances and i'm going to pop that in between instance on points and transform geometry and now if i click this button here and click apply you can see it's now a mesh i'll just hit ctrl z to undo that i hit n to close the end panel let me just increase this window so you can kind of see the no tree there in fact maybe i can drag this across i'm going to hold down shift right mouse button click and drag to add a control point just drag this over to here maybe hold down shift right mouse button click and drag just bring this over to here just so you can see where it's all going so this is the final node structure let me just bring this down quick demonstration so i hit shift the x drag that across 
shift D, X, drag that across, and then choose one of these, change the seed pattern to something random, same as with this one, change the seed pattern, maybe you can change the point count, so you've got more points or less points, just mix and mash it up until you've got something that you like. So there you go guys, snowflakes aren't just for Christmas, they're for life. That's the tutorial in a nutshell, I hope you found this useful, if you did, please click like and subscribe, it really helps my channel. Have a great day, level up, and thanks for watching.